if I speaking too slowly, raise your right hand. <laughs> and if you want me to stop, you can go to coffee, raise both hands. <laughs> very good. Now we're all together on that. So we're going to, I'm going to have to go very fast through this. We have about 20 minutes to talk about Java SE Embedded and what Java is for embedded devices. To Terence, when he mentioned Java SE, he mentioned Java SE and he mentioned the JDK. And the JDK is basically a superset of what's in Java SE in the, uh, in the JCP. So you can think of Java SE Embedded as being the other direction. It's almost a subset of the full Java SE JDK. Like Terence, this is our mandatory uh, disclaimer. It doesn't matter what we say. You take home what you say, but you can't talk, talk to us about it afterwards. Nobody cares. Oh, well, this isn't working. I want it to be able to do without it. Um, in addition, anything that I say is subject to change from this moment on. It may, have been, it may have been correct yesterday. It may not be correct from now on. So now, we're going to look a little bit about what Java Embedded is. I'm going to leave the ME Embedded to Terrence later on. He's got a great talk about that. And I'm going to concentrate on SE Embedded. I'm going to warn each and every one of you now. After I get through talking, there's a coffee break. We're going to show off the demos and the toys after the coffee break. So if you want to see the toys, you have to come back. <laughs> if you don't come back, you don't see the toys. Period. Um, first, a quiz. Now, to get answer the quiz, you have to raise your hand and answer correctly. From the five pictures on the board, who is the father of John? And Terrence, you're not allowed to answer this. <laughs> May I? Now, I demand... Yes, somebody back there. Very good. We do have a correct answer. Correct answers are worth something. Uh, where do we go? Oh, um, in Israel, we're very proud of everything. Um, come here. Look, leave the mic with the nice, the nice pretty ladies in the back. But you can come here. Um, and we're very proud of everything. And everybody talks about what we have. What some people don't have, we have great chocolate. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought some Israeli chocolate. It's really good. If you're friends with this gentleman, ask him about it later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> Whoever asked, yes, it is. And if you're worried about it, I've got more kosher food upstairs. All right. Number one, a little bit of background. I think all of you know this already. Where's Java? Number one, Java cards. Five billion Java cards in use. How many of you know what a Java card is? Ah, wrong answer. How many of you have a cell phone? What, in Romania they don't have cell phones? Of those cell phones, how many are not Android? Or, app, or an iPhone, those are Java card phones. Any phone that's not an, app, an iPhone, that's not an Android phone, that is a cell phone, more than likely it has a Java card in it. <coughs> Even the Windows phones, the SIM card in a Windows phone has got a Java, is a Java card. The SIM card is a Java card. There are three billion Java-based handsets, basically. 850 million Java desktops. That's basically anybody who has a Windows or a Linux PC running on their desktop, and m most of the Mac OS, you've got Java. There are 90 plus million Java-based TV devices. These are all embedded Java uses. All Blu-rays, PSP3s, for the most part, are blue, are, have Java in them. These are all Java embedded devices, and in the next hour with the toys, we're going to show off a few other Java embedded devices. And, and come back after the coffee break. So what do we need for an embedded device? This ought to be really simple. You need input and output. You need to be able to communicate with the device and get something back from it. You need to be, have a compute device, a CPU in there. It has to have a basic OS, an operating system. And but beyond that, you need a programming model and programming tools. This is very, very generic. And with 
Now, with embedded devices, we've got all sorts of other things that are going on. Number one, codes. The amount of devices that we have, what kind of memory they have, gets bigger and bigger exponentially every year. So we can put in more complex code. There's nobody, almost nobody, maybe no exception, almost nobody that doesn't write more and more complex code. Code has a tendency to grow, get complex, and grow bugs. It has to have more functions. We also want faster development cycles. We want to get, be able to get the new biggest toy out there tomorrow and not wait six months. Things have to be connected to the internet. What's the use of a PC that's not connected to the internet today? What's the use of a handset that doesn't connect somehow to the internet? It's just a piece of plastic, basically, or silicon. And so we also want to be able to keep BOM, the bill of materials, cost low, so that way more and more people can buy them. What we've seen is that in CPUs, especially these three companies, they've got stronger CPUs coming out, they have support for more memory, they're faster, larger amount of bits, they need better and better programming tools to work with them. Working in a similar, well, I'm looking around here, usually in, I come to a Java Technology Day and I'm one of the oldest people in the room. I'm really impressed to see how many of, you, how many of us are over 50. Nah, you're not coming off in a minute, it's okay. Those of us that are over 50 remember assembler. We remember the pains of assembler. Probably some of our own gray hair came from assembler, if not our kids. You remember assembler? No way. No, I have a gray hair. Ah. <laughs> no, you're still young. So, at Oracle, and what Terrence was saying earlier about Oracle being serious about Java is not a joke, and it's not a marketing line. They are. They put more people. They put more budget. They put more. Uh, they put roadmaps in place. They are serious. We are serious. We are now Oracle. It's not just that. It's we. Um, all we have. Oracle has discussions with all three of the vendors, ARM, Intel, and Freescale, about how to better leverage their processors with Java and how better to use multi-core support. When I think about multi-core support, it's not just for servers anymore, it's not just for laptops. Handsets now have multi-core processors on them. So now, where does Java fit in? Occasionally I get that question, embedded Java, what are you doing here? Java, like our previous talk, is for enterprise. No, Java's proven and stable. All of you here are Java developers. If you're developing for Java EE, or you move over to Java ME, the learning curve is very, very, very small. It's the same tools you're used to. It could be NetBeans, it could be Eclipse. It's the same basic language. It's the same basic deployment processes. So you have faster application development and object-oriented. You have virtual machines. And with Java ME, you've even got emulations that run on your PC, on your Mac OS, or on your your PC that you can see how things are going to run before you deploy them. And 15 years? Yeah, I guess you're right. Java's been around for 15 years now. It's not new and it's not going to die. It's not going anywhere, guys. <laughs> and as long as Java's around, you've got support. Oracle is going to give support. So we see Java, and you can go through this on your own, we see Java as being the best platform for embedded devices. It used to be, and this, little, this dovetails into and Terrence's talk later, that when we talked about a Java embedded device, we talked only about Java ME, micro edition. By the way, I was in Moscow a month ago at Java 1 in Moscow, and they decided that the EE, SE, and ME are no longer enterprise standard in micro. It works this way. Java EE is the Earth edition. I was there in Moscow, it was the anniversary of Uri Gagarin's flight in the Soyuz 50 years ago? Yeah, 50 years ago. So EE is the Earth edition. SE is smaller, it can be now be put on more intelligent devices, that's the Space edition. And the smaller one, the ME, it's on the Mars rover, so that's the Mars edition. Now, with devices having more memory, 
and the devices running operating systems that are more useful, we can define and we can define a Java VM for these. So the new embedded devices include Java ME and Java SE embedded. So what we're going to do is take a look and see where these were. Traditionally, what we see is that Java ME is in all sorts of devices that you see here on the left. Laser is not too visible. But as we go to the right, we're seeing more and more Java showing up. These devices, again, basic Java language. On top of that, we have a series of different VMs. The VMs just running, running the bytecode. These VMs can be specialized like for TV or for mobile, or they can be running Java Card or even client server in Java SE. And as we go further to the left, we get larger, more capable virtual machines. We see virtual machines that run in all sorts of neat devices. Um, these can be metering from smart metering for electricity and utilities. They can be printers. They can be voice over IP phones. All Cisco voice over IP phones have got Java inside. I know, it's developed in Israel, one floor above me. The, in, the engineer who works on them, when you walk in his office, he's got five different Cisco phones all taken apart, and all, each one of them having a different version of Java in me inside of it as he's working on it. That's on one side of his desk. I'll talk about the rest of his desk in a little while. You've got also network PCs. You've got multifunctional printers, Samsung and Rico. They have Java inside the printers. One thing that's not here is Java embedded in cars. The latest Audis and Fords have Java embedded in the cars. So Java SE embedded. Embedded itself, there's a legal definition. This is for the lawyers and for the bean counters to make sure. Basically what we're saying is that if the Java is in a device and it's a critical part of the way the device is and it's sold as a box, that's an embedded use. And they comply both the footprint reduced versions and the regular versions. Embedded only features. Now this is what comes cool. Terrence mentioned that the SDK has got lots of extra features. The JCP, the Java SE standard, has standard features. Well, Java SE embedded has some features that are removed to make it easier for you. For example, optimizations for memory. Yes, there's more and more memory on these devices, but you need to have a little bit authorized memory. Ready for disk or flash use. A headless configuration. A lot of times in a Java device, for example, a voice over IP phone or a box from Cisco, you don't need to have the swing, app, the swing APIs involved. So we've, removed, we've got versions that are removed. Low power and Processes and platforms that you may not see all the time. There are specialized versions that are running on Linux for ARM, Linux PowerPC, Windows XP. These are all versions that you can download for a trial version from, uh, from Oracle, and these are versions that are available. And you've got all the same things from Java SE that you would have. The same tools for development, the same programs, the same applications that you're writing will run on, the, on these same versions. Target configurations as we're going forward. Java 6 update 21, you notice on the right hand side, is already ready for ARM version 5, 6, 7, PowerPC, and x86. XP embedded, it's coming. In fact, this is an old slide, I think it's already out. So let's take a look really quick. I think I know how time is today. Um, for the most part, like I said, the platform that we have, the amount of uh, in the memory that we have is too big for most embedded devices. So we want to be able to reduce the memory, which will reduce the cost of the device, and still give you, the developers, all the capability that you'll have in a regular device. So we do some additional compression, we do some file removal, we go through and we cut out things that are probably not going to be used. For example, most people don't need three different garbage collectors on an embedded device. You won't be switching between them. You won't need, you, so we can say that you won't need AWT and Swing and some of the, or the Corpa parts that are in there. You just won't need these things on an embedded device. 
So for an ARM, we can reduce it down to around 32 meg. For 5.0 on Linux x86, we've been able to reduce from 68 megabytes for the footprint down to 29, almost 30 megabytes. So what we have is the Java SE specification is the top. That's Java SE in standard edition. That's standard edition itself. The regular implementation has all sorts of optional components, some of which you may know of, some of which you might not know of, some things that are for debugging, some things optional garbage collectors. And the embedded has some, most of the optional removed in order to bring it down to, a, to the SE specification. Yes, there are others. There are others in other companies that would say, we have Java also, and we can make the Java even smaller. Um, be careful of imposters. They may not be 100% compatible. You want 100% compatibility, you'll have to come to us. Footprint. We removed some of the Java Web Start plugin packs, the unpacks, RMI, some of the security things. Some of them, most of the security things are left in. Um, some of the man pages. I haven't seen an embedding device yet that needs the man pages. And then some, some of the localization. But these can be put back meaning if need be. Headless support. We don't support for the keyboard, mouse, video. Sometimes we remove that if we want. We don't need to. We can get the head full or the headless. Or you can also run headless true and make sure that things are working. Head full files have been removed, and so that we can reduce the memory of consumption that way. And then after that, we can go through and we tune. Take the default cloud configuration. <coughs> By bringing the memory footprint down, we improve the startup time. The startup time is faster. The memory requirements are, are, are smaller. The application is going to run faster. And then we can also now take advantage of multi-core processors. So then we have to go through and pick which uh, gar garbage collector is going to be the right one. Yeah. Questions? What is the just-in-time strategy? What is the strategy for just-in-time? Oh. I saw just-in-time strategy. What is the strategy? How do we do it? Um, on some implementations, all right, normal JIT, as, that, as the class is called and needs to be implemented, then it gets compiled in. Ah, I should repeat the question. Very good. All right, I'll repeat the question right now, then we'll go to the next question. Thank you very much. Um, gentleman asked, what is this JIT strategy? How do we do JIT just in time? Normal JIT, is, as a class is used, it's compiled, and the next time it's used, they use the compiled version. On some versions of Java, for example, Java real-time, you can specify what classes to be pre-compiled. So a JIT strategy picks between, we have to find the golden mean between pre-compiling and compiling during the time. Between what type of, uh, what classes are going to be used, you know they're going to be used, and you can specify them, versus those that may or may not be used. <coughs> Low memory support. Um, in Linux, for Linux Embedded, Linux Embedded is all over the place. Every time I go to an embedded conference, it's what I hear. And they're looking for how to handle low memory conditions. Well, we've already got, we can do a memory notify, we can define how we're going to do it, we can create, we can monitor it, and then we can go ahead and do either a full GC or a partial GC and maintain the amount of memory. These are things that are already available in Java. Power consumption. We can reduce the CPU usage almost to zero when the applications are idle. I've got an article I was reading about one of the devices that was shown where a uh, guy in the UK has a home office. Between the servers and his computers and his PCs and the air conditioning and everything else in the, in the, in the routers in his house, he was using somewhere above 600 watt, kilowatts per hour month just to, uh, to keep his computers running. By using an embedded Java on a device that will show you after the break, he was able to bring that 600 watts down to four. Not 400, four watts. <laughs> Thus basically making all of his embedded home office completely invisible to the electric company. <laughs> One of the things he did is he took advantage that when the applications are not needing the CPU, they pull out. When they pull out of the memory, the memory consumption goes down, the electrical requirements go down, and he's saving 
Not only is he saving power, he's saving money, he's saving <coughs> carbon dioxide, he's becoming very eco-friendly. Um, these are things that, neither one of us, you didn't talk earlier about uh, J.D. Are you on the title? Okay, I just realized I don't know if I should say something now. All right, one of the questions all of you should have, and that's what I just asked if Terrence is going to cover it. All right, with Sun, Sun has Hotspot. When Oracle bought Sun, Oracle already had J-Rock, which they, they acquired through BEA. What's going to happen with these JVMs, guys? That's a question. It's an important question. So now we'll get one more. Oh. Oh, okay. So I'll say that really quick. Then. I'll go ahead and get to that. So the JVM teams got together. This happened last summer, almost a year ago now. And they started sitting, they sat down, they looked at uh, several factors. Number one, what JVM is every, all the company developers are more comfortable with? Which JVM is more efficient? What features in the JVM are going to be necessary? It's not as clear cut as it might seem. Hotspot is well known. It's on a lot of different platforms. It's got a large amount of, it's got a large amount of, uh, of support from the developer community. JRocket is very efficient in the enterprise space, but it's not on as many platforms. And JRocket has some really, really cool Really cool stuff for management, which Hotspot's really horrible about. Memory management, um, crash analysis, which also Hotspot is lacking. So the teams decide, what are we going to merge? What's coming out was internally dubbed Hot Rocket. And nobody else laughed. All right. Um, it will be based, the code base will be based on the Hotspot code base, but some of the Enterprise features like the black box recording and the dials that are already in JRocket are being already ported in, and the final version will still be in the J under OpenJDK. That was something you didn't mention with JDK 7. The JDK 7 will be the first stab at a converged JVM. So, with the Hotspot Virtual Machine, we've eliminated all the polling threads, eliminated polling for X events in the embedded version. So we can make the CPU much power, consum power consumption much lower and the CPU much more efficient. So our design as we go forward, our design focus for Java SE Embedded, and this is a slightly different product, and I'm using the word product specifically. This is not an open product. It, you can open JDK as the open source version. The embedded is not an open product. Number one, we're looking at products that are the embedded devices that are resource constrained. We're trying to keep the unit per device cost, yes, real money, cost low, and use lower clock processors. So we're looking for performance monitoring that we can, as an option, JAR file compression as an option, JRE files that are included or not included in the final uh, JVM, class data sharing, and the JIT compiler. Using some of these, we can improve the start time. Start time means faster response. We can defer the initialization, or this is part of the JIT session, we can defer initialization, or we can do a class loading of the application at the beginning. We can enable and configure class data sharing. Class data sharing can be enabled at the beginning, and this will also make the, uh, make the application more efficient and more time to go up and see. Um, okay, so I'm leaving a bit, I know we're going to take advantage of multi-core processors. These days, if I remember, the iPhone even has a multi-core processor. A lot of the phones that are coming out have multi-core processors. So now we can use that to parallelize, parallelize the Java code. Then we have choices of which, uh, of which gar uh, garbage collector to use. I'm not going to go into what the different garbage collectors are now, but that's at least a couple hours talk. But there are several that are already in the Java 6 JVM, Serial Concurrent and Parallel. Um, one of the other items that's coming in at 7 is Garbage First, yet another garbage collector, which might, in certain applications, be more efficient and much faster than the Serial Concurrent or the Parallel. Um, if you want to, you can look down in GC Tuning on that URL. You can write us later. We can talk about garbage collection at a different time. They don't um, so then, what we can do is reach, reduce resource requirements. 
customize the heap sizes, adjust the free ratios, adjust the JIT, the JIT code buffer. We can make this tools using standard tools in order to, in order to optimize the Java SE for smaller footprints and still have a full Java SE. Alright, now a bit about the market. Where do we see this going? What for? Alright, Java SE for embedded. We see it for both desktop servers and for embedded use. Like I said, these are special, we have special JVMs built and ready for ARM and PowerPC and for uh, and, and, and already and others that are coming in the coming in the future. For development use, it's still free. <coughs> Let me stress that again. If you're developing an application, it's free. The moment you have a device, you sell to a customer, you make money, we want to make money. You think it's only fair. We're putting time, effort, um, resource, uh, resource cycles into developing these products to make them good for you. We also want to. The target market that we see is that in, by G, that we see that in Maya, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, where we're sitting, has got an incredibly large market for embedded devices. Actually, we think that we've got a large, untapped market for development and new devices, not just in EMEA, but in Eastern Europe. I think there's not just Romania, but Romania and all the Eastern European countries, we've got a lot of, a lot of potential with the developers and good ideas that we need to be, uh, and we need to be, be working on here. <coughs> we also see these devices being brought out of the educational market. The listing here is all from the States. But I've had a lot of re re references from universities in Eastern Europe and as well as in Russia so that they want to be able to do, do more interesting things with Java. Like I said, these are basically the same thing. Version 6 update 21 is available for ARM 5, 6, PowerPC. We'll show you what kind of devices and how to get started. Terence's demo after the coffee break is how to get started in embedded Java. We'll show how you can use these versions yourselves. It's already out. It's a rich set with APIs and hundreds of enhancements, and it enables to stay in sync with the standard SC. It has multi-core support. I'll we'll show you how that works. And as far as the uh, improvements, the improvements over the uh, previous versions for ARM PowerPC from 10 to 20 percent improvement in speed, which means that even using a embedded device, you're not going to take a hit in performance. I've got things. I've got graphs here that show how how it works, how it is from version five to six, and on PowerPC and Linux, it consistently is higher, much faster, better improvement. From here between, uh, it's also between Java five, uh, legal board between five and six, and you'll see what kind of boards you can do for development, also afterwards. So, future of embedded. Number one, it'll be developing Java SE embedded will be developed and will be progressing along with Java SE, the standard for edition. Um, Project Coin and JSR 292 that Terence talked about this morning, these will be imported also as we go along to Java Embedded and Java Embedded release. The Java SE 8 highlights that Terence discussed this morning, they'll be incorporated as we go into Java SE Embedded 8 as well. And in addition, we'll have some abundant solutions coming out in the future, things that might include things like BNB, Berkeley Database, a sync agent, or the Java mobile client, which we'll talk about later. So, the next question I often hear is, all right, I've got a device, I want to, make a, I want to build a device. How do I choose between Java IMI and Java Etsy? What, are, what happens when? Well, we'd like you to use all. Um, no. It depends, number one, on your CPU, which CPU you choose, how much memory you choose, how much memory you can give, you can allow, you can allocate for the OS, and for the uh, JVM, and for your application. As far as APIs, the embedded SE contains all the APIs. This might also be a deciding factor for you. Do I want to go with CDC? Java ME, CDC is Java ME, or with Java SC. If there are some of the APIs that you know you don't need, 
It may be easier, maybe more efficient from the point of view of the amount of memory to go with the Java ME implementation. All right, another quiz. Which famous CEO played in Iron Man 2? And he looks like Robert Downey Jr. Again, a hand raised. Hmm? And what's his name? Yes, you answered. Who, uh, who's yelling out? Don <laughs> Johnson. Don Johnson. Uh, wrong. All right, now you two are going to have to split the, uh, the bar of chocolate. <laughs> Come up afterwards. All right, so what we're going to look at, these are the slides, and then we'll have a coffee break and come back and see them not in the field. Where are we seeing Java SE in the field now? We're already seeing it in ATMs, parking meters, point of sale systems, routers, switches, storage appliances, network management systems, smart meters. Um, I'm not sure if Romania has, has it, but the rest in EU there is a mandate to go to smart metering by 2015, assuming we're all here in 2015. Um, a smart meter means that the meter itself can manage how much electricity is being consumed, where the electricity source is coming from. There are some countries that have multiple sources, or even some countries that allow the consumers to have wind-generated electrical generators and they feed the electricity back into the grid. Thus, the meter has to be able to manage which way the electricity is flowing. And combine the smart meters with smart houses to know which, you, which utilities in the house turn on and off and when, what needs to be used, what can be used, what time, what time of day you can use. For example, Men, we all want to go put on a load of wash, right? All the men do the load of wash. We want to put it in right now, but it may be 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and the cost of electricity is very high. The smart meter can say, well, you've got a choice. You can pay 10 euro per kilowatt hour right now, or you can delay doing the wash until 8 o'clock at night when the cost is 5, kilowatt, five euro, euro per kilowatt hour. And the meter will then you can coordinate with your washing machine when it will turn on and off. Some of these can be really horrible. The work. Um, electronic voting machines, factory automation systems. Smart meeting I just talked about. So, what you will get, I'm gonna run over your stuff and you're gonna go into a block. Oh, did I? Me too. You're supposed to coordinate. Um, all right, so you wanna get started. You can now purchase, this will show afterwards, a low-cost device. You get a USB keyboard and mice. We're going to show you what these devices look like after the, after the, uh, after the uh, break. Download in Untar and load in Java SE, and you're good to go. And I'm going to skip this, that way we can show these after, after, or we can show these after the, uh, the toys yeah, after the break. So, features, like I said, Java features, proven and stable. All of you developers are now ready to develop Java embedded for really cool devices. Rapid application, because you're all experts in Java, and you can get an application out by tomorrow, if not by Friday. Runs on a virtual machine, so you can move it from one device to another without having to change one letter of code. Multi-thread, multi-process, CPU core support, security and networking built in. There was an embedded systems conference in San Jose, but it happened a few ago on the break room, where you walked in, uh, that guru plug, we're going to show that afterwards, Terrence has got his with him, and exercises on how to work and start going. So if you want to get involved and start getting working with Java Embedded, here's a set of URLs, Java Me at Home, Java Embedded Java Overview, where to find the products, where to find information on it, there are blogs going on, including us. Uh, see, see whose blog I need to put up there? Terrence Barr at WordPress.com. And follow Java online. So if you have questions, talk to us later.